What up, what up, what's up? Of course, it's me, your boy, Richie Rich, at Consumer Appliance Report. Shoot another awesome video, cause that's what we do. Man, we just wanna welcome you guys to our channel, and if it's your first time, welcome, glad to have you. All right, thank you guys for all your support. So what we do here at Consumer Appliance Support is that we review appliances. So we review washers, microwaves, um, dishwashers, ovens, refrigerators, whatever appliance, major brand that's out there, we review them. All right, so we grade them on a four point scale. And after we do our evaluation, go into the lab and check that thing out. We give our overall review to let you know what we think. And we also give a stamp of approval. We will recommend this appliance as well. All right, so for this particular video, we're gonna be shooting a Samsung 30 inch wall oven. All right, so it's a single oven that can be flexed into a dual oven. So you got an oven at the bottom and an oven up top that you can use as well. All the functions, the features, we're gonna talk about the parts, we're gonna talk about the warranty, we're gonna talk about the price, and then of course, we're gonna give you our overall review. All right, so stay tuned until we see you again. Man, you already know what time it is, man, I'm out of here. So I see you, ah, peace. Mm. All right, so in this portion of the video, we're gonna talk about the functions and the features. One of our favorite parts of dissecting the appliance, figuring out what are some of the components that it has inside of it, what can it do, is it smart enough to communicate through an app, through your phone, um, anything new or interesting that they might add as far as the technology inside of the appliances or, or inside this appliance. So we're gonna dive into that real quick and let you know what we think. Let's get it! All right, so again, we're talking about the Samsung 30 inch single oven. Man, whoo! Let's dive into this joint as we watch the video. First thing that I noticed, again, one is the digital display. You can get the traditional analog or you can get your um, your digital um, clock. I really like it. It looks more almost like uh, the Infinity car where they have the digital display there. I think that's pretty nice. As far as the color, it's black stainless steel. So I like that joint. Um, of course, it has the windows and the doors that you can see through. I love that. Um, the door there as well. Really love it. The handle, everything else that you can see. Right here, we're going to start off with the mode knob. That's what they call it. You can call it either a thermostat or a mode knob. Same exact thing. All right, so this is where you select your functions and your features when you're dealing with this appliance. All right, so you have your clean, smart control, gourmet cook, healthy cook, Keep warm, steam roast, steam bake, roast, bake, raw, bake, and then of course your off position. All right, loving that already. You got your digital display here, all right? So you have your flex, which is your upper, you have your flex, which is your lower, you have your clock setting as well. You also have just a traditional setting, uh, different information inside of that, we're gonna dive into that. And then of course you have your light, on the right, you can turn the oven light on, and you have your reservoir, all right? So we're gonna show you that as well. Loving it. All right, so let's see. And then of course you have, I would say compare it, we call this the thermostat. This is what you use to adjust your temperature, all right? So we're gonna go into that as well when we look at the joint, loving it already from what we can see. All right, so the select the knob have different settings that you can choose from, all right? So one of the things that we can go into a little bit, as we could probably talk about the traditional bank and broil. We're so accustomed to that. That is just, just conventional. That's what it is, right? You bake, you broil, it's an oven, all right? So we're already used to those type of things. One of the things I wanted to really mention is the convection, all right? So you have your, let's look at this real quick. So we can start off with the convection bake. That's this one at the bottom here. So when you're dealing with your convection bake, right? It says the convection bake uses a fan to circulate the oven's heat, the oven's heat evenly and continuously within the oven. This improves the heat distribution that allows for even cooking and excellent results while using multiple racks at the same time. Breads and pastries brown more evenly. All right, so that's the benefit of using the convection bake. You also have your convection rolls. Let's talk about that. Convection roast is good for cooking large tender cuts of meat uncovered, all right? So the convection fan circulates the heat to the heated air evenly over and around the food. Meat and poultry are browned on all sides as if they were cooked on a rotisserie. The heated air seals 
in the heated air seals in juices. You gotta, gotta love the juices. Quickly for moist and tender results, while at the same time creating a rich golden brown exterior. All right, so that's the bake, the convection bake, and the convection roll. All right, so that's pretty good there. Um, they do have a chart or cooking mode that you can use, depending on if you're using the flex mode. And once we get into that, we'll talk about that a little bit more as well. All right, so that's one of the things that we love there. So you also have your steam bake, man, steam bake and steam roast. Let's dive into that. It says steam bake provides excellent baking conditions for breads, pastries, and dessert by increasing increasing moisture content and improving texture and flavor. All right, so that's cool. There you have your steam roast. Steam roast provides excellent cooking conditions for roasting meats or poultry by maintaining a crispy surface a, a crispy surface while sealing in the juices for a moist and tender result man lovely sounds sounds delicious that's all i'm saying and then of course you have your keep warm function right that you have there as well the keep warm will keep will keep cooked food warm for service for serving up to three hours after cooking has finished you can use the keep warm mode without any cooking operations or you can set it to activate after a time or delay cook cooking option. <coughs> Excuse me, man. You could you should you, you should not use this mode to reheat cold food. All right, so that's not what it's for. So all right, so we love that. All right, so let's look at the chart that they might have. For the steam bake, when you're using the steam bake, you can use a high, medium or low. Um, for the high is like rye breads and desserts. For the medium is croissants or pies or reheat pizza or casseroles. Low is pastries. So you're dealing with the steam rolls. The high features not on there, but they have a medium for meat, poultry, and low for turkey and large meats. All right. So that's the benefit of using that there. So we love that. We love that. So that's pretty cool. So right now on a display screen, of course. You are seeing the actual smart mode. All right, so let's read that and see what it says about the smart mode. It says to use the oven smart mode control feature, you must download Samsung Smart Home app to to a mobile device. Functions functions can be operated using Samsung Smart Home app. May not work smoothly if communication conditions are poor or the oven is installed in a place with a weak Wi-Fi signal. You know what I never really thought about? Um, installing the oven or these new modern ovens in, in the proper area. I mean, outside of the kitchen, that's all you can really do. But now we gotta factor in the area that it's in, the Wi-Fi might be not as strong, or it might not be weak, and it affects the performance of the oven. Like that didn't even cross my mind because I'm just so used to using my phone, but that's a, that's a good note there. I really like that. But of course, you can communicate it with, with the app. All right, so that's cool. I love that. I love that function. So let's see what you can do with the control. It says remotely change oven setting, mode, time, temperature using your mo mo mobile device. It says remotely start the oven, remotely turn off the oven. And it says when cooking starts, you can change the cooking time and temperature. Um, it says importantly, self clean mode cannot be start remotely. Which is a which is a, a benefit. You don't really want to do self-cleaning if you ain't at home. But I do understand. It. Let's look at some of these notes. It says opening the door or turning the mode knob to the to other modes will deactivate the smart control. So if you open the door, deactivate the smart control. Okay. And prevent you from turning the oven on or oven on or controlling the oven remotely. It says if smart control is deactivated, you can still monitor the oven status and turn the oven off. Okay. When oven cooking is finished or canceled, smart control will be deactivated. All right, so that's pretty cool. Here. I like that. Really like that, John. That's pretty dope. I like that, John. So let's rock off to the next thing what they got. Smart control. You have your gourmet cook. All right, so let's dive into some of the gourmet cooks. Really like that joint, you know what I'm saying? Let's see what the gourmet cook has. It says, using the gourmet cook feature, 
for inexperienced cooks. Ha! That's me, your boy, Richie Rich. That's me. <laughs> so I'm, I'm gonna love this feature. So it's the oven offers 10 gourmet auto cook features. Take advantage of this feature to save time or shorten your learning curve. The cooking time and temperature will be adjusted according to the selected recipe. So you have this and different recipes you can select. You have garlic prime rib, mustard filet mignon steak, roasted lemon chicken thighs, roasted honey mustard chicken breast, uh, fresh Chicago pizza, uh, three cheese la lasagna, bread pudding. So man, you got a lot of stuff. And it tells you if you're looking at it, depending on the servings, um, that's one not on here as well, but it says for eight to nine servings, use roasting pan and roasting rack, use temperature probe. So again, it's instructing you in a way how to really use these gourmet functions and features, which is I love. Because it's, for, again, if you're not a cook like that, you know what I'm saying? You know how to do a little something, something, but you ain't, you know what I'm saying? You ain't Betty Crocker or anybody like that, you know, or Chef Ramsay. You know, so you be able to do some stuff there with your grandmother. My grandma was as nice as I don't know what and cook. Especially if you're down south and all these different areas, you're from different countries. Man, some people know how to cook their behinds off. So if you're not like that, this is for you. This helps you. Helps me. Helps us all. Right? So that's pretty dope there. I really like that joint with the gourmet cooking. I think that's hot and I like it. Alright, so let's go into healthy cooking. This is what is good for us here. Man. Loving the healthy cooking mode, right? Because this is where, if you are used to working out, you already know when you're working out, man, the hardest part of working out is eating right. It has nothing to do with working out. You can work out all day. You know how to do that. But here, you gotta know how to eat right, healthy cooking. So that's cool, let's dive into that. So as you can see on the display screen, that healthy cooking has pre-programmed temperatures for baked potato, grilled chicken, salmon steak, white fish filet. Um, it also has dehydrated or bread proof. All right, so you have those features there. So from looking at this, that's what it's all about. This helps you know how to cook healthy meals. Um, like I said, the temperature is already preset. So if you're using a single or you're using a twin oven, it's all up to you. That's what they call it. They call it a twin oven. All right, so. That's cool there. I love that function. Love that feature. Um, as far as that. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. I'm going to let you see what we did. Hit the, the, the bake and it's right there. Alright, temperature's already preset. Um, if you want a delay start or cook time, you select that and hit start. It's up to you. Alright, that's the baked potato. And then the image on it looks, man, the image looks really good. Like it knows what it's doing. All right, look at that. Boom, cool, right there. Loving that joint. All right, that's the steak right there. That's pretty tough. I really, really, really like that joint. All right. This, of course, we talked about the bake and the broil. That's traditional. That's what we used to. You turn it to bake. You turn it to broil. That comes on there. I love that. All right. So, like I said before, the thermostat tick turning the temperature up. All right. This is how you adjust the temperature. That's the dial for that. You can turn it up or turn it down. Cool. All right. So now we're dealing with the flex. This is where you can actually split the oven in food. So you have your flex. So let's we can dive into that a little bit so that we can see what we can find with the divider. It says using the divider. All right, so this is where the flex clean comes in. It says select, select. It says the smart divider inserted. Please select oven. All right, so we're gonna go into that so you can see the smart divider. All right, so that's the divider or it's called a partition, all right? So let's, before we go into that, because we can always go back, let's go into the setting. So this is where I press the setting button, you can see the Wi-Fi, you have your display, you have your time, you have your language, there's also touch screen, you can do the volume, you can do the language, um, easy convection, evolved device, Sabbath mode, right now the demo mode is on, right? Because it's in the store, so you don't want you to really turn it on. And then you have your remote management there as well. So that's cool, loving that. And like I said, this is the inside of the oven. You can see the gasket around the oven as well. You can see the convection fan in the back. So the partition has to be in the middle in order to separate the two ovens. All right? So once it's pulled open or it's disconnected, then it becomes a single. Um, if you push the partition in, then it becomes the twin or the double. All right? 
So that's cool there as well. Loving that joint. So this is the partition. You pulling the joint out. All right. Talked about the convection fan. You have your broiler up top there already. Then this is right here is your sensing probe. Right? This is your sensing probe. I didn't forget about what I needed to talk about. So this is your sensing probe that you insert the meat probe in. Right? And you stick it in the meat and you use it accordingly. All right? So loving that function. Loving that feature as well. So I'm trying to find some information on here to see if there's anything different as far as meat probe. Right? If they're able to just give us some detailed information on that. Um, no, not really. Everything else is troubleshooting, not really much there. Let me see. Give me one second as I look this joint up real quick. Yeah, but yeah, so that's the meat pro though. You insert it inside the meat. Temperature is going to be different for the meat probe than it is over a uh, <clears throat> traditional probe as well. Alright, it says using the meat probe for many foods, especially roast and poultry, beef, chicken, turkey, pork, lamb. Alright, that's what it's for. Measuring the internal temperature is the best way to determine if the food is properly cooked. So that's what the meat probe is for. That's what I really like. The temperature probe um, lets you cook meat to the exact internal temperature you want. Taking the guesswork out of determining whether a piece of meat is done or not. That's the benefit of using that. Alright? Uh, <clears throat> the available temperature, temperature is different. So you're not going to select 350. Right? Because it varies between 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Alright? So that's what the temperature probe is for. Of course they're saying do not store the, over, the, uh, the probe in the oven. So you might want to just put it away for a little bit. It says do not leave the probe inside the oven doing self-cleaning. So again, you just want to be careful when you're using it. Alright, so they do have a chart that you can use when you're dealing with the meat probe. If it's beef or lamb, if it's rare, it's 140, 140 degrees. Medium is 160 degrees. Well done. Excuse me, that's me. That's 170. Love and well done. Pork, 170. Poultry, 180 to 185. All right? So that's pretty good thing. All right, so, lovely. I didn't forget about the twin mode, but I just wanted to show you guys something. You can see the element, the bake element is underneath. All right, so I wanted to show you guys the switch that's located in the back, right? That's the switch that allows you to divide between the, the, the single and the twin. All right, so that's what that is for. There we go, the, the divider switch. So when that is deactivated, you pull it out, that means it deactivated. When you insert it, it means that it's pushed in. So that's what separates the two of them. All right, so let's talk about the divider where it says twin cool mode temperature rating set. It says using the divider, can you can divide the oven into two components, flex upper and a flex lower. This is also called twin mode. When you use the flex upper and the flex compartment and the flex lower compartment, at the same time, each oven has a maximum, a minimum and a maximum amount of power available and co consequently minimum and maximum temperature settings. All right? So let's look at that real quick. When we're talking about the flex upper compartment, when you're doing the broiler, of course you have high, right? The max, the minimum is 450, the max is 480. When it's the low, the lowest is 325, the high is 480. When you're doing the convection bake and convection rolls, um, depending on the set setting, right? This is the set setting. Um, you're looking at 4, 480, 450, 300, 250, 175. That's convection bake and convection roll. It says the lower, of course, have different settings. So it all depends on if you're using the lower or the upper. All right, so what I quoted you in the beginning where it says high and low. Where it says high and low, that's for the upper. For the lower, you have 400, 325, 480, 480, depending on the, the higher and the lower. So I'm gonna actually show you guys the chart so you can actually see what I'm looking at. Just in case if there was any errors in, my, in what I said. All right, so you'll be able to see that for yourself. All right, it says operating the oven. So you have the bake and convection bake, right? You can do the flex lower compartment or the flex upper compartment, depending on the set temperature. Right, set temperature 480, uh, 450, 350, stuff like that. 
Uh, depending on the low or the high, which settings you have, you have convection bake and you have convection rolls. You have a minimum and a maximum. So you guys can see that on the chart as well that we're looking at. And it says, let's look at this oven functions. Bake, roll, convection, bake, convection, roast, steam, bake, steam, roast, keep warm, healthy, gourmet, uh, healthy cook, gourmet cook, smart control, clean. Without the divider, that's all the functions for the single. When you're dealing with the, the dual flex, with the divider for the upper and the lower, you only have a certain amount of options. All right, so you have roll, convection, bake, convection, roll, steam, healthy cook. For the lower oven, you have bake, convection, bake, healthy cook. So depending on what setting you use, depending on if you're using the, the twin oven or using the single, you have different settings. It says use the twin flex oven function of functionality. You must insert the divider into the oven and divide it into an upper and a lower compartment. All right, so we already discussed that at nausea, man. So that's really what that is about there. So that's pretty cool. All right, you can divide this single oven into two and you have different functions and features that you can actually use. All right, so I'm glad we was able to dissect that and go into that a little bit. All right, that's pretty dope. And this is what it looks like. It's a smart divider inserter, right? You can see the side there. When you pull it out, bam. Boom, there we go right there, you can see it. All right, so we're pushing it back in. You just gotta be careful how that goes in and all that stuff. And this is the reservoir. Woo. Bro, this is where, where, you, um, where you can actually drain the unit as well. Right, so we can talk about that some. I'm just trying to find the information so that we can review this appliance. Um, so that's pretty dope there. Let's see, it says the water reservoir. Let's dive into that. It says the water reservoir is used for steam bake, steam rolls, and hybrid clean function. I forgot we gotta go into that as far as the cleaning functions as well. This is also to remove water scale that may form on the oven walls, especially after steam baking, steam roasting, and hybrid cleaning. Right? It says fit it, fit in with water in advance or steam cooking or descaling. Alright? That's what we have. It says locate the water reservoir. The water reservoir is on the right side of the oven, you already need that, just uh, above the oven opening. Touch reservoir in and out on the control panel to open the water reservoir. Grasp the reservoir and slide it out to remove. Cool. All right, it says open the reservoir cup and fill up the reservoir with 22 ounce or 650 milliliters of drinkable water. All right, so that's what the reservoir is for. All right, so that's what you can use it for. So they do have a maximum or minimum when you remove the cap that you can see how much you can put in. You gotta be careful how you put it in. Use it according to what is recommended by the manufacturer, all right? So that's cool there, love it, love it. Boom, push it back, it works great. Awesome there. So what I'm gonna also go back to before we end this video, is just going back to the um, the cleaning portion. All right, because I wanna see that for a second, all right? We can start there because they have different cleaning settings that you can use as well right um, also on this oven it has a keyboard if depending on the setting that you use you can use the keyboard to touch the numbers if you're doing like time cooking or stuff like that if you want to use the, um, the touch screen you can use that it has a keyboard that you can use to communicate with the oven all right so let's see what type of cleaning modes it has i know it has multiple cleaning modes I think it has about four, to be honest with you, when I was looking up the information. So, give me a second as your boy dive into this video. All right, so here we go. It says the clean feature has four sections, selections, excuse me. Self-clean, hybrid clean, disc scale, and draining. Mm. All right, so the self-cleaning Oven uses high temperatures, well above cooking temperatures, to burn off leftover grease and residue completely, or reduce them to a finely powdered ash that can wipe away with a damp cloth. All right, so that's that there. So before self-cleaning, it's recommended that you're doing a certain thing. It's recommended venting your kitchen with an open door. We always mention that when you're dealing with self-cleaning for proper ventilation, fan or hood, doing the self-cleaning. 
Remove the wire rack, roll up pan, roll pan insert, all cookware, and aluminum foil from the oven. All right, that's one of the big things. Aluminum foil gets stuck or it welds itself to the cavity of the oven. That's why it's best to get those out of there. Cause it can, you know, you're gonna have a blue oven with a metal silver foil rack right? just melted there cause you're not gonna be able to get it off. All right, so that's how it works. All right, so that's cool. So getting some of the stuff you can, you can see, you can use. It's time you also do not clean the oven door gasket by hand. You may hand clean the door, but you don't want to hand clean the gasket. Cause it's real flare, 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 right? It says, it says at the bottom, do not clean the gasket. The fiberglass material of the oven door gasket cannot withstand abrasion. It is essential for the gasket to remain intact. If you notice it becoming worn or frayed, fray, frayed, whatever, have it replaced. <laughs> All right. So you gotta be careful. Um, you also have the hybrid cleaner. It says the hybrid cleaner function saves time and energy by removing leftover grease and residue that can wipe up away with a damp cloth. All right, so that's the hybrid cleaner. And it's time to use some do not leave with certain stuff in there as well. So let's just go into a little bit more. It says uh, the hybrid clean, you can set the clean for an hour and a half to two and a half hours. As far as the hybrid clean, right? So that's in the owner's manual as well. That's another clean function that you can use there, right? Uh, just want to see if I can find anything of importance. So just little notes that they have that you can look at as well, all right? To understand what the hybrid clean is, that's going to be in the description. Um, the scale it says if you if you use the steam bake or steam roast functions frequently. We recommend the scaling regularly, regularly to remove minerals from the oven that may affect the taste or quality of food cooked when running the scaling cycle. Use only the scaling agents that are specific to steam ovens or coffee machines. All right, so you do have that functions and the feature there that you can use. All right, so you know that's pretty dope. It says follow the on-screen um, instructions. It takes three hours to complete the cycle. Empty and clean the water reservoir and then fill it with 1.75 ounces or 50 milliliters of the scaleless agent and or 13.5 ounce or 400 milliliters of drinkable water. All right, so that's pretty cool there. Um, it says um, use oven gloves to remove an empty water reservoir, reservoir and then refill it with 22 ounces of 650 mill milliliters of drinkable water. All right, so just use regular water and it melts. Uh, let's talk about the draining port. How to run the drain? It says that when steam functions are complete, you make you must drain the remaining water to prevent the water from affecting the other cooking modes. To drain the water, follow the steps. So of course, that's a part of this, this, this the uh, to the cleaning process, using the drain and how to drain, and it teaches you how to do that as well. All right. So we already run through most of the stuff, everything that we can think of on here, man, as far as this appliance. Again, this Samsung joint is really tough. I'm just going to let the rest of this run out so you can see that. But, man, when you're talking about it, oven, functions and features fully loaded, whew, you got a lot of stuff that you can do. And I know it's going to be a lot easier when you go home and you can watch this video as well. Because we're going to help you, man, make sure you, make sure you understand how to use your oven. All right, so we're going to dive into the next thing at hand, man. Until then, it's me. And we'll see you in a little bit when we finish up this whole, whole entire up. All right, peace. All right, so on this portion of the video, we're going to talk about price. How much is going to cost you? All right, so we're going to go to several sites that we would normally use as far as discussing the pricing. Home Depot, Best Buy, Lowe's. All right, so we're going to check those out to see how much this appliance costs. All right, so according to the Home Depot website, right now is $27.88, all right? They're stating that they're giving you 10% off, so you're saving yourself about 300 and something dollars, right? About $311 according to the site. You can also get up to a $420 rebate. So you wanna look at different specials that they might have according to the area that you're in. Also, when you're looking at it, you can also have a payment plan. All right, so the payment plan for this particular unit for the next 12 months is $233, all right? So again, this is up to you. This is your decision to make. So you wanna make that, that decision accordingly, so it's all up to you. And this is just for the black stainless steel. So when you're looking at different appliances, man, depending on the color, it makes a difference of how much you're gonna pay. 
All right, so let me show you that real quick so you can see that as, a, see that as an example. All right, so let's look at the stainless steel. The stainless steel compared to the black stainless steel is $26.98. All right, so you're roughly saving about an additional $100 in the difference in the color. All right, so the payment also changes as far as the payment plan for the next 12 months. You're looking at $225, right? So that's how much you'll pay for the stainless steel and um, for the next 12 months as far as the price, the changes, the difference. And these are the only two colors right now that Samsung has that have in this particular unit. It's stainless steel or black stainless steel. And that's how much you'll pay for that. So let's go to a different site to see what they have. Let's go to uh, Best Buy. All right, so Best Buy. Their price is not much different. There's no that much difference there. So if you're looking at the price according to Best Buy for the stainless steel, it's two thousand six nine 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 nine. So you said roughly about twenty seven hundred bucks. All right. So if you're looking at the payment plan, that's a little bit cheaper. It's eighteen months. So the time difference, the, the duration of time is a lot longer. Eighteen months to twelve, according to the Home Depot website, and you're sitting, you're uh, paying about one hundred and fifty bucks. All right, so if you want to do that, that is up to you. So let's look at the black stainless steel. You're looking at about 27, when it loads up, it'll tell you. 27 89 all right? So you're still spending close to almost $3,000 for a built-in single wall oven, which is electric, but it has dual flex fuel, right? So we'll talk about that in the um, functions and features portion of the video. All right, so when you're looking at that, black stainless steel, of course, to this side is $27.89.99. And then, of course, the payment plan goes up a little bit more, about $5. So $155 if you want to finance it for the next 18 months. All right, so you do have options when you go out to purchase appliances. You can pay for it right away. Or you could actually finance it and pay for it for a certain period of time each month and just pay it off that way. All right, so let's go to Lowe's. Lowe's is always a little bit special. Right, their prices might be a little bit different. So let's figure out if it's that much difference in price according to Lowe's, because sometimes it is. All right, so let's see what Lowe's got. All right, so according to Lowe's, it's $27.89. All right, so Lowe's is just a, right about the same price that all the other sites um, will give it to you for us, uh, for the Home Depot, for the Best Buy, right? So that's the same price there, $27.89 for the black stainless steel. Um, they don't, I don't see a payment plan or anything through Lowe's, but you can always ask as well it says you can save uh, five percent eligible purchase made with your Lowe's advantage card so if you have a Lowe's advantage card you can save a hundred bucks if you want the black stainless steel it's about 26.49 all right so a little bit over a um, hundred bucks and there are certain sales depending on the area that you're in you can get rebates for 350 bucks you can also um, you're, you're saving yourself three hundred and ten dollars and it depends on, according you can see here, at the end of the month, April 28th, all right? So you want to consider that as well. So there's options out here if you decide that you want to get it done. All right, let's go to the stainless steel. The standard stainless steel, all right? So that's $26.99. Let me get a little man off here. $26.99. You're saving yourself 300 bucks until the end of the month, and you can get a uh, $350 rebate as well. Um, if you got the Lowe's Advantage card, then it's $25.6405. All right, so you can look at the price for this unit and tell that it's extremely expensive as far as just the built-in single wall ovens. Wall ovens are extremely expensive anyway. If they're dual, dual, they're typically a lot um, higher in price. This is a single unit and this is going for this particular rate. So again, we'll discuss that in the overall review and let you know what we feel about that as well. But right now you're looking at about 26 to 2700 bucks. So with taxes, we're rounded off to about $3,000. It doesn't matter what color you get. It's about $3,000 for this particular unit when we're talking about the price. All right, so now we're gonna dive into the next thing, man, as we dissect this actual built-in single wall oven by Samsung. All right, so this portion of the video, we're gonna talk about the warranty, warranty, warranty. What is the manufacturer warranty? All right, what are you getting for purchasing this particular built-in wall oven? All right, so I'm going on the Home Depot website because they normally give you a copy of the owner's manual as well. So that's one site that you can look at. You can scroll in at the bottom as I'm doing here and you can just select where it says info and guides and select warranty. All right, so let's look at 
this Samsung warranty that they have. Just from looking at it, it looks kind of generic, but you know, it is what it is. So according to this, it says, the Samsung brand product as supplied and distributed by Samsung Electronics America Inc. and delivered new in the original carton to the original consumer purchaser is warranty by Samsung against manufacturing defects in materials and workmanship for a limited warranty period of one year. Parts and labels. All right. That's it. Um, I don't see anything else. Let me read some of this stuff just to see if you might, if there's something that we're missing here. It says the limited warranty begins on the original date of purchase and is valid only on products purchased and used in the United States. To receive warranty service, the purchaser must contact Samsung for problem determination um, and service procedures. Warranty service can only be performed by who? A Samsung authorized service center. The original dated bill of sale must be presented upon request as proof of purchase to Samsung or Samsung. Okay. Samsung or Samsung's um, authorized service dealer. Samsung will provide in-home service during the warranty period at no charge subject to availability within the contingent United States. I hope I said that right. In home service is not available in all areas. To receive home service, the product must be unobstructed and accessible to the service agent. If service is not available, Samsung may elect to provide transportation to the product to and from an authorized service center. Samsung will repair or replace this product at our option at no charge as stipulated herein with new or reconditioned parts so you gotta think about that with new or reconditioned parts or products if found to be defective during the limited warranty period specified above all replaced parts and products before the property samsung of samsung and must be returned to samsung it says all replaced parts and products become the property of Samsung and must be returned to Samsung. Replacement parts and products assume their remaining original warranty for 90 day or 90 days, whichever is longer. All right, so that's a couple things that um, we can bring to you guys that we don't normally discuss or get into, which is good information, good education, so that you know they'll be able to use new parts or reconditioned parts. Right, so that's one of the issues at times when we go out to customers' home to repair their appliances. They're stating, they ask the question, is this part new? Is it refurbished? Um, according to the manufacturer, you can get either one as long as it works. All right, so that's the thing there. But you're not getting any extended warranty for this unit outside of the one year manufacturer warranty. You can pause this and read it for yourself if you would like. Um, it talks about the stuff that's not covered by um, Samsung as well. That's pretty normal right here. You can read that, you can see that. Um, anything else, anything else special? Um, no, I don't see anything else, man. So that's it for the warranty. Like I said, I'm just gonna take my time and have you, if you wanna pause everything so you can read it, you can print it out, take a picture of it. All this stuff you can do for yourself. Check it out at the Home Depot website. But this is all you're getting, 12 months part. 12 months labor that is it all right we're going to discuss that as well in the overall review all right so stay tuned we're going to dive into the next portion of just breaking down breaking down this samsung built-in single wall all right so this portion of the video we're going to talk about parts all right so there's times when the manufacturer warranty has ran out all right and you have to pay out of pocket for a repair so how much is gonna cost you when you do have to make that decision, all right? So you can either call Samsung directly or you can contact your local service company to come, that come out to repair this unit. So one of the sites that we love to use is csparchdirect.com. All right, so we done already put the model number in as you can see here as well. So now we're just gonna dive into some of these parts that they might have. All right, so let's go into that. Let's see what we can start off with. To dive in the first page, it says Steam Parts Number Two. 
All right, so let's look at that. I want to zoom in some so that we all can see that. All right, so if you're looking at the picture, there's an assembly that comes together with this part number three, or you can get the individual parts depending on the number 3-1, 3-2, 3-6, 3-8, stuff like that. You just find the picture that looks similar to the part that you need so that you can purchase the part. All right. Then you also have number four that does the same thing, 4-2, 4-1, uh, or you can get the whole entire assembly. All right, it's all up to you. So let's see what's available and what's not available. All right, so if we was trying to get the assembly holder pump, that is number three. Right now, that's coming up as no longer available. All right, let's see if there's any other site that might have this part number that we can look up. Um, just to see if it's just the Sears Parts Direct. Um, let's go to Encompass. We have, let's see what they have. Um, assembly holder pump, they do have the part. It's $196.95. So about 200 bucks for the whole entire assembly. Um, depending on what's wrong with it, if you just want to break it down and get individual parts, um, you got to consider that when you're dealing with the technicians. It all, it's all there about their discretion, whatever they're comfortable doing. Sometimes it's easier to replace the whole entire thing rather than just piece by piece, depending on what that particular piece is. All right? So right now it's 196. So let's do one of our estimates. Let's talk about CPR. If you're not familiar with CPR, it's cost per repair. So let's look at that real quick. So let's round this up to about 200 bucks. The part is $200. The label, depending on where this part is located, if you're dealing with steam, you're gonna have to pull the wall oven out. Depending on the weight of the wall oven, you might have to have a helper. So let's say that the labor is 150, helper is 60, so you're looking at 210 as far as the labor alone. $210 of labor, $200 as far as the part, no taxes, no markup, you're just looking at about 410 bucks. All right, so if you do markup, it might be between 400, 500 bucks and a little bit over. All right, so that's the price range that you're gonna possibly pay if you do need to replace the steam holder pump assembly. All right, so that's what we have there. So let's dive into this joint. Um, you can get individual components, 3-1, which is the valve. That's 115.66. All right, so that part is easier, easier to change depending on the technician, then it's good, of course, the price might change and it might vary. All right, you can also shop around for different prices and parts. It doesn't mean that this part, if you're looking it up for yourself, um, it's gonna cost the same amount of, that you see on the Sears, Sears sites that we have here. All right, you have individual parts of the component here, you have your holder pump that's 3-4, that's that there, that's $53.36. Um, you have your tube. Um, 3-6, that's somewhere up there, up here, 3-6, you can see that as well. Alright, so some of these parts are really inexpensive depending on what you're buying, if you buy the assembly. Let's go to number 4. Alright, you can always pause the video as well so you can see it. Alright, so you have your uh, range, high limit thermostat that can go bad, you have your, um, your holder, Stand that is 192.45. That's the whole entire assembly. That's number four that you can see there um, as well. And you're looking at the video. All right, so that number four, that's how much it will cost. All right, so depending on the issue, you have your steamer. That is $80.13. You can see that as well, right, when you're dealing with that. All right, so we can dive into what else, what else they might have. You have your wire harness, that's $88.69. That's the wires that goes directly to that. All right, so that's cool there. Cool, awesome, 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 awesome. So let's dive into something else to see what else they might have. Let's go into the controls, because this is where it gets expensive. All right, so let's dive into that. All right, so you have 1.7, you got your control. Number one, that part is no longer available. You can get the whole entire assembly. So that's the thing with Samsung at times, you can buy the whole assembly, but getting the price, getting the part is sometimes the um, harder issue. All right, so that part is no longer available. All right, so you're gonna have to get it piece by piece. So the speaker, 1.1, 1 
Let's see what that is. 1.1, that's the speaker over here. That's $57.99. LED display, $82.30. That's one three. Man, when you're dealing with LEDs, man, they can be real expensive. All right, wall oven control board. Not a bad price for a control board, $134.27. All right, so that's pretty. That's pretty reasonable. Um, depending on what control board and how many control boards it might have, that's pretty reasonable. Let's talk about the wall oven display board. So that's totally different. So you have your wall oven control board. Now you have your wall oven display board. So if you're looking at the display board, it is three hundred fifty-three dollars and forty-nine cents. Woo! Four hundred bucks. Then you gotta factor in labor. Normally when you replace a control board or a wall oven, you can pull the unit out just to give you some access. And you can get it, um, get into the control board that way. All right, which is the display board or the control board. If you're having any issues and you need a helper, of course, like we discussed, you're gonna have to pay extra for that. If the service company um, does not provide the helper fee for free. All right? So you're looking at 400 bucks in parts. Right, $150 in labor. So you're looking at 550 bucks, no markup. Just me looking at this site, getting this part, getting up, just marking up the parts a little bit, just rhyming it off. So you're looking at 450 to 500 bucks to replace the control board or display board. I'm sorry, the display board. All right, so that's 350 dollars and 40 cents. So you gotta look at that as well. Really expensive, man. Really, 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 really expensive. All right, so on here is the knob. Yo, hot card. Right. Let me look, it says 1-6. Let's look at that's what the, what the knob is. 1-6, yes, this knob. The knob. Y'all better not break this knob. Y'all better not lose this knob. It's gonna cost you some money for the knob. This is the most expensive knob I've ever seen. $136.78 for the knob. That's just a knob. Come on, man. You gotta consider this joint. See what it is just for a knob? Jesus Christmas. All right, one dash eight. Again, another control board. So we talked about the display board that you communicate with when you're uh, registering whatever it is that you wanna cook and you can uh, do the touch screen. That's 353. The control board that it has as well, that is 134. Now you have another control board and that is 395. So again, roughly, I'm not marking that up to 400. It's gonna be more than that. You might spend 450, 460, 470, go for 500 bucks for this board that's 395. So let's rough, rough, round it up to about 460. Labor, 150, four, five, six. That's 600 and something dollars. That's 600 and something dollars just to replace the board. And you're probably gonna get it done because of the price of this unit. All right, let's see where the board is at. 1-8, right, 1-8. So we can see one, oh, so that's the whole entire assembly, 1-8. With everything else except for the knob. So everything comes with that except for the knob. That's how much that is. 1-7, um, let me see what 1-7, so you can actually see 1-7. All right, so this is the display board here. Assembly, okay, so that's different. So this is the 1-7, that's the 353. When you're getting the whole entire assembly with the control panel, that's 395. All right, so that's different here. So that's why I'm kind of glad we went back to that so you can actually see that. All right, the harness is 25, 29. Again, when it's breaking down the parts, here goes the module. Again, everything is computerized. When you're dealing with computers, the easier it is for you to use the product, and use uh, computers and all these different high tech stuff, modern technology, they're gonna it's gonna cost you a lot of money for it, all right? So that's why these appliances are so expensive because of what it can do. Everything that it's doing, it's gonna cost you some bread, all right? The module, 46.49, another module, 46.81, another module, 71.49, how you communicate the term. Man, these mod is, is gonna cost you some money. All right, I'm trying to see if I can find anything else. Other controls, again, another control here, the touch. So this is you buying these individual pieces. 
right? So it's cheaper to buy the individual pieces if you can find them. And if it's easier for the tech to put it in. There's times when the tech come out and like, look, I'm not, we're not putting all this individual stuff in. We're just gonna charge you for the whole entire thing. And it's easier to just put that one huge part in rather than try to do stuff piece by piece. So it all depends on how it's made, depending on how it's looked, depending on the company that comes out and their expertise and their experience in uh, working with um, Samsung appliances, all right? So you gotta keep that in mind. So it might be cheaper if they, of course, if they do the individual parts rather than get the whole entire thing. All right, 135, 80, 97.49. So it's cheaper, you know, but it's a lot easier for the tech to come out when they're dealing with stuff. So let's bring this stuff down. Again, you can always pause it just for you to get part numbers and see what parts you might need, stuff like that. If you're handy and you can do it yourself, I have a problem. All right, let's dive into the cavity assembly and parts. All right, so this is the cavity, oven cavity. Ooh, they got an oven cavity? Luck or double. Um, case right, heater shield, that's number one. Alright, so this is your heater assembly. Alright, so your heating element is hidden underneath the case. Alright, it's not sticking out. That's 123.19. That's pretty common for a heating element to show out. So again, you're spending about 130 bucks, label 150, looking at 280. That's just a, a rough estimate. Markup is gonna be more than that. You're gonna spend at least 300, at least 300. All right, so you got your case, right? Again, the cavity and stuff like that doesn't normally go bad, all right? This heating element is a common issue that does go bad on electric ranges, all right? So more than likely, after between the five or 10 years, you might, you're gonna have an issue with that. All right, let's see what else they got. You got a heater shield, number one. And then what's number 15? Let's see. All right, so you got your door. Let's start with wall oven door gasket. That's number six. That's 97.50. All right, so you got to think about that. Gasket. All right, let's see what else they got. All these different stuff is no longer available. The sensor, the oven sensor, 77.56. All right. You gotta pay for that. Um, the probe. The probe, that's number 11-2. That's the probe inside of where you stick the meat probe in. To replace that probe is 158.99. Again, having access to it because you gotta pull the unit out to replace the probe on the side because it either runs through the side and then alongside the outer portion of the oven. So it depends on the work that the, cut the technician has to do. Alright, so here we go there, harness, I'm not sure what type of harness that is, again just trying to give you some basic information on here. Um, the heater is 9213, alright, so you have the heater case and then you got the heater. So you have two different heaters there, alright, so depending on which one you need, what the uh, bolt, you can see that there, it's going to cost you. Might cost you a little, might cost you a lot. We're going to cost you. Got your vent, 85.99. Our mounting is 57.3. All right. So, yeah, that's just what it is right there. I'm going to take my time and scroll so you guys can see that as well. And um, shop around, man. Shop around so that you'll be able to get the best price. The best price. All right, let's dive into the steamer parts assembly number one. So you got number two and you got number one. Let's see what we got. Number one is available, wall oven water reservoir assembly. All right, so that's the reservoir when you press that button and it comes out. You can purchase the whole entire reservoir instead of piece by piece. All right, you're looking at 155.74. All right, for the whole entire assembly. Um, you got number two there, that's a part of the, the steamer as well. You got your gasket, which is 1-2. That's 1805, again, not expensive. Rumble Watt, that's um, 1-3, $12. All right, number two, you have the bracket here, everything. You're looking at 158.95, all right? You got motors, 135. Got your door switch, $10. Got another bracket, 
So again, when you're breaking it down, it's a lot cheaper than spending um, a certain amount of money. But like I said, it depends on the tech. All right, you gotta give it. You gotta leave that in here. All right, so other than that, that's it. This is just the steaming function of it. I don't want to really go too fast, just in case you want to pause the video so you can see it. All right, cool there. All right, let's see. All right, so then we have the door. All right, the door doesn't normally break. Maybe the hinges, right? If you want that, or glass is broken. If you're looking at replacing the whole door is two fifty-eight forty-four. So if we replace the whole door, part is three hundred. Labor one fifty, four fifty to five hundred to replace the whole door. But there are times you could probably get it piece by piece. But you can see some of these parts are no longer available. They're no longer available on Sears website. So you want to make sure that you uh, go to different sites. All right, you have your inner door assembly. All right, inner door assembly. Uh, number is three hundred and thirty-three dollars and forty-four cents. All right. So that might be 400 for the inner door, all right? It's gonna be 400 for the inner door, at least 400. You gotta factor in later. Your door handle, whoo, 195.19 is $200 for a door handle. So that's what I'm saying, man. It's gonna, it's, it's expensive already. Real expensive. All right, so you got different glass and stuff like that. Right now, it's saying no longer available on Sears website, but you can probably get it somewhere else. All right, so you want to consider that as well. But yeah, most of these are just no longer available. Wall oven wire harness, the LED lamp, $105.99. Man, that's what I said, man. When they're simpler, easier, they're cheaper. But when you're dealing with modern technology, it's just gonna cost you. All right, so that's cool there. Let's see what else. That's, again, that's everything. If you want to get it piece by piece, man, you can pause this joint and watch this joint. Door hinges, all that stuff as well. I didn't talk about that. Um, I, didn't, I didn't see anything that says door hinges. Um, what's that number? 1-510? Let me see what the door handle's going for. You don't even have it. All right, support. Yeah, so these stuff are no longer available. So you can check it somewhere else. All right, and you got the assembly and the body. Now you got the blower, cooling fan, 143.72. You got your wall oven cooling fan and something. You got another fan, 106.95. You got the racks you can buy, stuff like that. So yeah, like I said, most of these look like they're just no longer available, but it's just for this site. But here go the convection fan motor, 93.58 on this Samsung unit. The fans does go bad, it's a common issue um, where it can make noise or not spin. I'm familiar with this one a lot. This one is a range hood fan motor too as well. Same thing. Another convection fan motor, so you gotta be careful which one you get, which one you have. All right, so when you see that, that's cool. That's pretty cool there, all right? Really cool. Wire racks, 142.32. The cover, eh, that don't, not a common issue, man, but cool. Another wall oven control board, that's the 124.50, that looks like the relay board. Wire harness. Terminal block that the electricity runs through. All right, so door switches. The range of the meat probe. The meat probe sensor that you stick in is almost 100. Owner's manual. Man, you pick rocks. Fifty dollars and forty nine cents. Nobody buy no owner's manual in 2020, 2021. You can buy all that stuff online. Why would you buy that for fifty dollars? Crazy. Sounds like crazy. All right, cool. All right, so you can see everything that we saw there, man. This is the parts portion of the video. Again, we're gonna dissect and finish up this appliance, man, so that you'll be able to see that and know exactly what it is that you're getting. All right, so we'll talk to you soon. All right, so now we're gonna shoot our overall review and let you know exactly how we feel about this uh, 
uh, Samsung 30 inch wall. Alright, so let's start off with the warranty. Man, as far as the manufacturer warranty when you purchase this unit, you're only getting a, uh, a one year manufacturer warranty, both parts and labor. Um, unfortunately, I'm extremely disappointed in this one. Normally when you purchase a Samsung unit, you get a um, you get a little bit more, right? So you'll get an additional part, maybe the elements, maybe you get an additional warranty on the control. But this particular one, for the price that you're paying for it, you're not really getting much but the standard one year manufacturer warranty. So this is why as far as the warranty, we're just gonna give it an average grade and just give it a three because they just don't give you anything more. Um, it's, 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 it's not really desirable, man. I'm really disappointed in Samsung because like I said, they normally give you more than your traditional brands. Kenmore, Whirlpool, um, Frigidaire, GE, and all that type of stuff. Samsung normally goes a little bit above what warranty they have, and for this particular one, they didn't. So that's why we're giving them a three. All right, let's talk about parts. Man, what are some of the parts? Some of the common parts that normally go bad is the bake element, the broad element. That's pretty normal there. If you gotta order the control panel as an assembly, of course, it's gonna cost you more, but if you gotta get the individual parts, it's not, it's not that expensive. And that's the benefit of dealing with Samsung appliances. Their parts are not that expensive, right? But it comes, if, if you gotta replace the assembly, it's gonna cost you a little bit more. So that's one of the things there that we can discuss. When we talked about the door, um, if you get the whole entire door assembly, that could cost you some, uh, some money as well. Some of the steaming functions that you, could have, you have to pay for that comes as an assembly, that can cost you some money. But again, if you break, the, if, if the technician that comes out breaks everything down or whatever part you might need, you can just grab that specific part, then it's not gonna cost you as much instead of getting the whole entire assembly. So as far as the parts, we really like the parts. So we're gonna go with as far as the parts grade, we're gonna give it a four, all right? Cause we really like it. All right, so the next thing that we have on hand is the price. How much? It's gonna cost you, all right? It cost you a little, it might cost you a lot. It's gonna cost you. All right, so the price roughly is gonna be between 26 to about 28, 2900 bucks. So we're gonna round it up to about $3,000, right? So that's how much we uh, the appliance is gonna cost you. Um, of course, we didn't factor in any um, taxes or anything else. You might get a discount depending on the store that you go in and the area that you're in, if they're able to give you an additional 10%. But as far as the price, you're looking at about $3,000, right? The price for this particular unit is really good, right? I can't say that it's a bad price because we're gonna show you a couple of joints that we can compare. Um, between a GE and it's a KitchenAid. That's the same appliance, you can see it, but it doesn't give you the same amount of stuff. You're getting a lot more with the Samsung, right? So that's how you're gonna compare the appliances that you're getting. We've showed you that as well. You can pause the video so you can see that. But yeah, man, you're talking about as far as the price. It's a really good price. The more you get in any appliance, if you, if, if you, if you want it to be quieter, if you want it to communicate with your phone, um, as far as the technology, um, self-cleaning, convection, all these added things is gonna cost you more money. So with this particular unit, you can say this one is fully loaded and you're getting it for a, a, the, a, a decent price comparing to other appliances that's in the same field or in the, uh, in the same area, it's blowing it away, all right? So as far as the, the, um, the price, we're gonna give it a four. So now I'll focus on my favorite part. <laughs> Ah, the functions and the features. Man, I really enjoyed um, going into the lab and checking out this actual 30-inch uh, wall oven. As far as some of the functions and features that it has, it has a steam uh, steam roast, steam bake, right? So you can steam that. It also has um, gourmet cook for those who aren't great in cooking or need some assistance. The oven can help you. For those who like working out at the gym, and we already know working out at the gym, hardest part is eating right. You have pre, um, preset temperatures for uh, grilled chicken, uh, baked potatoes, salmon, that you can actually cook healthy meals inside of the oven that we like there. Awesome. Then of course you have the different self-cleaning functions, right? Some of them you have your standard self-clean, right? You have your hybrid clean, you have a draining clean, you got a uh, the scale clean. So you have like four different clean functions that you can actually use, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then of course, you can uh, communicate with it, with downloading the Samsung app. You can use the app to um, activate your, your oven remotely, to turn it on and, and turn certain functions on, right? So you gotta think about that as well. 
And then of course, the last but not least, it's a single oven that you can turn into a dual oven, right? So you can actually cook up top and at the bottom at the same time, or you can pull the, tar the partition out and just use it as a single oven, right? And then of course, convection. You have, you have this is what I'm saying, this joint is like fully loaded. Oh, man, I really like it. So as far as you already know what time it is, man, the functions and the features, we're gonna give it a five. So let's get into this joint, see what we got. Warranty three, parts four, price four, and the functions and the features, we're gonna give it a five. Totaling a uh, point scale about 16, dividing by four, we're looking at a four. So the average grade that we're gonna give this a GPA is a B, and that is a passing grade. So we really like this appliance. The only knockoff is if you would have just gotten a little bit more from Samsung from the warranty, man, this probably would have been the best oven, wall single oven, which is a flex on the market, right? It's the warranty that is that really messes everything up. But outside of that, we really like the drink. All right, of course, we always say, man, it's me, your boy, Rich Rich, at the Super Pond Support. You know what time it is, man. You help me, I help you. We both love each other. Until next time, you already know, man. Subscribe to the channel. Enjoy the music as well, man. Until next time, we'll see you guys, man. Peace.